We're going to look at these two terms, 2x cubed y to the fourth and 16xy squared. Now what I recommend is do a prime factorization tree. So you want to break down the number so that you can see what the number is composed of, what it's made up of. So we can see that this is going to be 2x cubed y to the fourth, right? 16 is going to be 4 times 4, which can be broken down to 4 twos, which is 2 to the fourth, x to the first, y squared. Okay, just to show you that x cubed, there's three x's, four y's, but I would normally just write this as 2x cubed y to the fourth, and 2 to the fourth, x, y squared. Now, when you're finding the greatest common factor, okay, this may come as a little bit of a, an irony here, you actually want to take whatever occurs the least. So even though it's the greatest common factor, you want to take whatever occurs the least. So here we have one, two, here we have four twos. Our greatest common factor, our GCF, is just going to start off with two to the first. Now we've got three x's, one x, we only are going to use one x, and y to the fourth and y squared, we're only going to use y squared. So what the greatest common factor tells us is, this is the largest quantity that will divide into this quantity and into this quantity. It's the largest, it's the greatest. But if we were to pick, let's say, instead of 1x, 3x's, like x cubed, this would be too large. It wouldn't go into or divide into this quantity evenly. It would, it would have too many x's. So that's why you're actually doing the opposite. You're choosing whatever occurs the least. Okay, now as far as the least common multiple, the least common multiple, you use this technique when you're trying to get common denominators. Like say you're trying to add 1 third and 1 15th. You know, you're trying to find the smallest denominator so that these both have the same denominator so you can add them together. Now when you find the lowest common denominator, or in this case we're talking about the least common multiple, what you actually do is you take whatever occurs the most, right? So it's the opposite, right? It's ironic. So here we have one, two, here we have four twos. So for our least common multiple, we're actually gonna need four twos. Here we've got three x's, one x, we're gonna need the one that occurs the most, three, and we have four y's and two y's, we're gonna need the one that occurs the most. Now you can go ahead and simplify this. This is gonna be 16x cubed y to the fourth. So what that means is that if this was our denominator and this was our denominator, this is what we would want to be our common denominator, okay? So that's the lowest uh, quantity that this uh, will be able to go into evenly as well as this will be able to divide into evenly. So just think about the opposite. Greatest common factor, actually take whatever occurs less, okay? And the least common multiple, take whatever occurs most. So see if you can do this one on your own. If you want, pause the video and then you can restart it and see if you got it right. But let's dive right in. So basically 48 is eight times six. I'm just doing a prime factorization tree. Four times two, two times three, four is two times two. So we have four twos, one three, one x, and three y's, right? 60 x we have six times 10, two times three. Notice I just keep dividing these, breaking these down until they're only divisible by one and themselves. So they're prime numbers. And I write them in order from lowest to highest. So for this one, we have two squared, three to the first, five to the second, and one x, okay? So if we wanna find the greatest common factor, the GCF, okay? Let's see, so greatest common factor, we have to take whatever occurs less. We've got two twos here, four twos here. We only are gonna use two twos. We have one three, one three, it's a tie. What do you do in the case of a tie? You just use one, okay? And then we have one x and 1x, okay, which we're just gonna take whichever occurs less, that's x. We've got two fives and no fives, so we definitely need two uh, no fives. Okay, we take whatever occurs less. And we've got uh, y cubed and no y cubed, so we're gonna just take no y cubed, okay? So we're taking whatever occurs less. So if you simplify this, you get 12x, and that's the greatest common factor. So that means that 12x is the largest thing that will divide into 60x five times and 12x will divide into, is the largest thing, it will also divide into 48xy cubed. So if you were trying to like reduce 60x divided by 48xy cubed, if you divided the numerator and the denominator by 12x, okay, this will allow you to reduce the fraction to lowest terms. So this would give you five, this is gonna give you four y cubed. So now it's reduced. So that's the largest quantity that goes into both of these. Okay, least common multiple, 
least common multiple, we're actually going to take whatever occurs more. So here we have four twos, two twos. We're going to need four twos. One three, one three, it's a tie, so we're still going to use one three. Uh, two fives, no fives, we're going to use the two fives. I usually go from lowest to highest. X's, we've got one X in both cases, so it's a tie. And then Y cubed, no Y's, we're going to take the one that occurs more, Y cubed. So if we simplify all that down, what do we get? We get, let's see, so that's going to be 16 times 3 is 48 times 25. Uh, okay, let's see, we've got some tough math here. Okay, let's see, 48 times 25, what is that? Well, we've got 5 times 8 is 40, carry the 4, that's 20, 24, 0, 16, 6, 1, that's uh, 8, 9, so we're getting, let's see, what is this, 0, 0, uh, 1,200. So we're basically getting 1,200 xy cubed, and that's your least common multiple. So I hope this helped you to understand how to find the greatest common factor and least common multiple faster and easier. Just think of doing the opposite, okay? And uh, check out some of my past videos, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next video. I'll talk to you soon.